The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of Owen TV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! And hello and welcome in to Views from the Sidelines. I'm your host, Joey Tysick, my partner, Malik Hill. It is a very rainy Wednesday outside. You know, I was debating whether to come into work today or if I needed to start building the ark. I wasn't really sure, to be honest. It's supposed to rain all day. But it's cool because we're just going to talk about football the whole day. Michigan and Michigan State both breaked into the top 25. And then the uh, NFL had some interesting games, and we're going to get to our picks this week. That will also be quite fun to find out where uh, we rank. But let's get right into it. Michigan uh, dismantling Rocky Lombardi and Northern Illinois Huskies like we thought they probably would. They won 63-10, to uh, ran the brakes off the ball, and uh, they continued their strong stretch. Malik, any takeaways from this game for you? Yeah, uh, it was good that they could stop the Rocky Lombardi part two revenge game, I guess. Last year, he came into Ann Arbor and just threw deep balls for fourth qu- for four quarters, yep. and Michigan couldn't stop it, mm-hmm. which led to Don Brown getting fired and then bringing in the youth, a lot of youth in the coaching staff, which is working out so far because I'm liking what I'm seeing. This is the most dominant start I think they've had to a season since 2016 when they were the the best team Harbaugh had, has had in his era at Michigan. It's the best the running game has looked to me in the Harbaugh era. Mm-hmm. I mean, there is – even against Washington, didn't have an offense, but their defense is legit, and they ran through Washington too. They couldn't stop the running game. So the fact that you have Blake Corum, who's clearly a star at this point, Hassan, Hassan Haskins is one of the best number two options in the country. And the O-line, I didn't expect the O-line to look this good. They are, they get pushed almost every play. Mm -hmm. I I haven't seen, I've seen less than four or five times where where a running back has been stopped in the backfield. Dudes get at least like three or four yards, usually more than that. Obviously, Ronnie, but Ronnie Bell being gone sucks because now you're down to mostly specialist receivers, guys with like more speed and possession receivers. But in this game, they were able to make some plays. Cade McNamara hit Cornelius Johnson in stride for a 90-yard touchdown pass. They got the fans going. It was good to see that when they need to, a receiver can make a play. He destroyed a Northern Illinois DB on a like double route, like a hitch and go, mm-hmm. and was wide open 50 yards down the field. And uh, Cade, he got into some momentum, hit the tight end down the seam, hit some guys on the sideline on some out routes. It was – they did what they're supposed to do, and that's the biggest thing that's been a bit of a problem the past few years. Michigan is just supposed to handle business against these type of teams, and I expect that this weekend too. Even though Greg Schiano was a really good coach, Rutgers isn't – this isn't the terrible Rutgers from the past few years under Chris Ash. Rutgers is 3-0, and and they're going to play hard, but Michigan is much more talented – and this new coaching staff is doing a much better job than the last regime has done the past two years. So I expect them to win this weekend. I like what I've seen so far. No hype train, no high expectations, but also no low expectations. Mm-hmm. Because when you do- when you come out and dominate like this, you are expected to play at a higher level than what you've shown in the past few years. Yeah. So, yeah, like what I'm seeing. Wisconsin is the real big test next week, but good win, good job taking care of the ball. Nine straight touchdowns to start the game. Mm -hmm. No punts. Jim Harbaugh never brought the punter out, which was kind of weird. Just strange Jim Harbaugh things. But, yeah, no punts, ton of touchdowns. 
and the young guys got some burn too. Donovan Edwards looks like he's going to be the next stud at running back. Mm-hmm. He has so much speed and elusiveness and power all together. So, yeah, uh, top twenty-five rankings really don't matter that much so far. Yeah, at this moment. So yeah, it's cool, but I just want them to keep winning. Yeah, I'm a little surprised that they jumped all the way up to nineteen, but I guess there was a, there was a I lot mean, of movement. A, a lot of teams have been looking. Very either bad or just disappointing. Yeah, there was a lot of movement towards the end or the back half of the rankings. Um, so, yeah, they got Rutgers coming up this weekend. And then next weekend is Wisconsin. So two, like, meaningful games coming up here. Then they get another little break. They got Nebraska and Northwestern. Um, and then the end of October is when they play Michigan State. And then middle of November is Penn State. So, I mean, if they can get through Rutgers and Wisconsin, I mean, they're looking to be, what is that, 7-0 and heading into Michigan State. But Wisconsin's going to be tough. But if they can pull that off, that will be very interesting for Michigan. Yeah, the they, one They haven't beat Wisconsin at Wisconsin in over 20 years, I think. It was 2001, so 20 years at this point. Yeah. So that game is always difficult. This Wisconsin team has been, has been having some struggles. Graham Mertz hasn't thrown a touchdown pass yet. He has zero touchdowns to two interceptions. The run game is solid, and the Wisconsin defense is tough like always. Yeah. So it's it might be a lower scoring, tighter game, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's it's going to be challenging no matter what. Yeah. Uh, the one, it's not even a gripe, but it's it's the one thing that I question about Michigan, um, and I've said it before. I'm just a little nervous of the passing game. I know you're not- you have reasons to be because the best receiver is out and right. It's a bunch of guys that are unproven as high level guys. Now, and I'm just nervous because I feel like this run game is so good that they could get they could get somewhere this season. I don't know if it's maybe a Big Ten championship. Maybe it's. I don't see them being a playoff team, but like they could contend for the the title at least for Big Ten. The Big Ten East, at least. Yeah, maybe. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, I'm just curious of if a team figures out how to stop this this run game, what they're going to look like. That may be that might be my only concern for this team so far. Um, we'll see coming up in these next couple games if there's anything else that comes up. But right now, that's the only thing I'm I'm curious of how that's going to look is when we get into these tougher tougher games, what they're going to do if the run game's not working. If the run game works all season, like I said before, go for it. Just do it. If you're running over everybody, if it, if their run game is that good that they don't need to pass, then that's fine. I'm just nervous if somebody they're figures... They're going to need to pass. Exactly. Yeah. If somebody figures it out, what will they do? That's my only concern. But uh, Rutgers, that'll be a first uh, good Big Ten game. And then Wisconsin, like we said... That one is marked on the calendars. Michigan State, they're in like the same wheelhouse as Michigan. Although they came into the season with different expectations right. and storylines, right. but they're they're rounding out to at like around the same. The way place. their season is working, yes. <clears throat> um, still lower expectations, I think, than Michigan, but they've now won their first three games. They knocked off Miami over this weekend. 38 to 17. So they look really good in that game. The one concern maybe now is that, you know, Miami's not as good as people thought they were. Um, but it allowed Michigan State to move up to number 20 in the rankings. So they're in the top 25 now, which is cool. Um, Kenneth Walker is a real deal. This yeah. man is pretty insane, honestly. And he's fun to watch. Um, he give like, I've heard a lot of people saying that it gives them Le'Veon Bell vibes. I felt like in college, Le'Veon Bell was more of a run over you kind of guy. He did. Yeah. He was elusive. He didn't become that level of Le'Veon Bell until he got to the Steelers. Right. Um, so in college, Le'Veon tended to run over a lot of guys. He was just a big dude. He was still super athletic and would hurdle guys. Right. But yeah. yeah. Kenneth Walker is just elusive and hard to take down. Um, he always has his feet moving. This is another game where he went way over 100 yards, 172 in this game. And he's just their their main guy, which I love. 
Um, I like that they're not rotating backs like they have in the last couple of years, trying to figure that out. They're just sticking with him, and it's working so well. And then when that run game gets going, Peyton Thorne has looked pretty good. I'm not going to say he's looked amazing just yet. He's looked confident. Yes, but he's looked really good for the most part. And he has Jalen Naylor, Jaden Reed on the outsides. And those two guys are solid. They're going to be NFL-type talents if they keep this up. Um, and the first, I, I did not know <laughs> going into this that Peyton Thorne and Jaden Reed played on the same high school team. And they showed that during the game, which was really cool, actually. So these guys, they, they've been playing together for forever. So they would know somewhat each other's tendencies. And that's just, I think that's a cool story to go off of. And it makes even more sense to why um, Peyton Thorne is their starter over Anthony Russo. Um, on the Miami side, man, they had high hopes going into the season. They it lost, looked real pitiful. Yeah, they lost to Alabama, which, I mean. Everybody expected. Yeah, nobody thought that was a crazy thing. So then their next big test was this Michigan State game, and people were trying to see if this would be a get-right game for Miami. It was not. Derek King yeah. threw 388 yards, had to throw it a lot, uh, two touchdowns and two interceptions. Basically, his only help was from Charleston Rambo. Caught 12 passes for 156 yards and two touchdowns. Will Mallory caught a dropped a wide open touchdown pass in the end zone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was on a Miami. Every like college football team has an SB Nation site. Yeah, and I was on Miami's after the game, looking through like the thread of the live comments mm -hmm. and fans were. It was really entertaining, but sad seeing how angry and frustrated they were. Yeah, watching that game because just the the effort on defense. Mm -hmm. isn't it some of the worst you've seen from a college team <laughs> like that that highlight play of the safety that runs up to the receiver on the screen and just turns away to the other receiver and just doesn't tackle him mm -hmm. like nobody's tackling there's no energy there's barely any effort the yeah. coaching looks horrible a lot of dudes looks like they're just in the wrong place at the wrong time it was really michigan state they're they're like checking off every box so far, mm -hmm. and I think that adds some. There was one thing that scared you for Michigan. There's something that scares me for Michigan State. Okay, how do they respond to all this newfound hype, mm -hmm. and people actually looking at them now, and being in the spotlight, and Michigan, Michigan St State fans being overly beyond excited and like throwing hype into this program. Yeah, now. but that that's. That's a thing that you see with every Michigan and Michigan State fan that doesn't follow super closely. That they're not so into it like we are. Those are the people that you have to be careful. That's kind of a stereotype for a lot for a lot of Michigan State fans that they don't jump on until the team is really good and the spotlight is on. Yeah. But I, yeah how, I just feel like that's did, a thing that Michigan and Michigan State fans they, they both just get overhyped about when their team is doing well. I think that's starting to that has slowly gone away with Michigan fans after these past few seasons. I don't see it as much as I used to because fans are a lot more realistic. Maybe. There was a lot of – tons of unrealistic stuff being said by Michigan State fans after the game. But we won't get deep into that. How do they handle this now that people expect more from them? Because they look like at least an eight-win team. Yeah. Like if they don't get to seven or eight wins, it's going to be a disappointment now. Because Mel Tucker, after last season, he got rid of every player that didn't cut it, mm -hmm. brought in 20-something transfers, yeah, brought in Wake Forest, best running back, brought in SEC, def uh, SEC defensive back, SEC linebacker. He brought in better talent and kept the dudes from last year that could cut it. Mm -hmm. And it's all meshing and it's all working right now. Yeah. How much better does it look as the season go goes on? Well, they have... I mean, at least two more games where they can just not coast, but, I mean, Nebraska they have this week. Nebraska has shown they have a good defense, but the offense is still just sketchy. Western Kentucky could be one of those ones that they don't want to like. Oh, yeah, they're going to throw it. They can't take that lightly. They're going to yeah, throw it nonstop. They don't want to go. Yeah, they don't want to take that one too lightly. And then they get at Rutgers, which we'll see what Rutgers looks like against Michigan to get a better idea. Um, of how they look against the upper echelon of the Big Ten, I guess. Um, 
But there's that streak after Nebraska, Western Kentucky, at Rutgers, at Indiana, which Indiana can either go off or they'll shoot themselves in the foot. They're looking really bad right now mm-hmm. in terms of expectations people had for them after last season. Yeah. Michael Penix is leading the country in interceptions. Right. But if he can get right and look kind of like last year, Indiana could all of a sudden turn into a tougher team. I think their run game is going to have to get going for that to happen because it all looks sloppy right now. Yeah. So I think Michigan like Michigan State has a lot longer to get right, I feel like, because they don't play Michigan until the end of October, and that's kind of their their biggest game. Um, so I think they have a lot of time to temper those expectations, and I think that Mel Tucker is going to be one of those guys that will be able to make sure that these guys stay grounded. That's the hope, at least. Um, but I do see that, I mean, there could be some problems. But at the same time, like, these guys have been, like, besides the transfers, the other guys have been been there for quite a while, so they kind of know um, where they're going. But I, I can see that. But other than that, both teams off to good starts so far. We're getting into the bulk of their season where games start to get a little bit tougher and we'll be able to see a little bit more of what's going on with these teams. Yeah. Um, top 25, Penn State up to number six, right behind Iowa, who's still sitting at five. Coming off that win against Auburn. Mm-hmm. Pretty good win, even though Auburn is more of a middle-of-the-road SEC team this year Yeah. with a brand-new coach. They still had a lot of strong talent. Mm-hmm. And Penn State, they came and they did what they needed to do. Yeah, Sean Clifford had the best game of his career. Mm-hmm. Only four incompletions on 32 throws. Yeah, So good win for Penn State. Yep. Um, the one I wanted to point out to you was Florida playing Alabama. Malik, you Look. almost got this one wrong. Or almost got it right. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, and I went with you. I bet on Florida in this game for you know, like a $5 bet. But, you know, this game started off so terribly. Alabama was smacking them in the first quarter. I was yeah. about to regret going along with Malik on this Florida idea. Um, but Florida slowly chipped away. And they somehow figured out Alabama a little bit, slowed them down, and they only lost 29-31. to 31, So I think that's interesting. Yeah, they. it's something Alabama's going to have to figure out against better competition because Florida dominated on the DN O-line mm-hmm. later in the game. Like they, they were getting whatever they wanted in the running game. It was like seven, eight yards a carry. And they started running read option and option plays and just dominating. Yeah. They didn't need to throw. They're going to have to find a better option at quarterback than Emory Jones if they want to be that higher level program they were in the past. But Emory Jones started bad, got a lot better in the second half. Anthony Richardson is crazy talented, couldn't play, but he's he could be the guy of the future. Yeah. So, yeah. You want to talk a little bit about Ohio State before we move on? Because... What did you want it to took them about? a while to get rid of Tulsa. Yeah, yeah. It took Ohio State a while to get rid of Tulsa, the yeah. Golden Hurricane. They, they things hung are, around. Things are, things are looking very questionable in Ohio State right now. Yeah, I think, I mean, problem is that, like, in these questionable games, the last two, uh, C.J. Stroud in the previous game last week threw for almost, like, over 400 yards. Yeah. And then in this game, Henderson ran for 277 yards on 24 carries. He was going to break out eventually, and this was the game where he did it. He's a superstar. <laughs> it's just insane. Travion Henderson is a superstar. But it's just insane. And are, I, again, I know it's Tulsa, but. There are real pop problems with their consistency in the passing game. I think they only targeted Chris Olave like twice. Mm-hmm. So something is just off. The defense is still giving up yards. Yeah. Tulsa was doing really good in the run game, and their quarterback got into a rhythm. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know what it's going to take for this for something to click. Yeah. Or for them to figure things out, but it's looking very strange right. so far. That with all the talent they have, all the five-star guys, it's just not meshing. Yeah. I mean, they're still in the same boat, though, as like Michigan State. Where like, they play Akron this week, and then they play – they play at Rutgers, which we said Rutgers could be kind of tough. Play Maryland at uh, Indiana, and then they don't have to play anybody really till Penn State at the end of October. Yeah. So they also have time to get things figured out. They have plenty of time to figure it out, but 
having it, ha- being Ohio State and having no pass rush, mm-hmm. having no pass rush, and no standout player on the D line, no standout player, no standout player on the defense in general. Yeah, there's nobody making plays, and how long is it going to take for them to figure out who that guy is going to be? Right. Um. Last one that I'll bring up real quick. BYU. Beating, a three no start. Beating back over to back Pac twelve teams. Yeah. But back to back top twenty five victories, yeah. technically. Beating Utah and Arizona State. So they're just they're like more disciplined and just better <clears throat> better coached. They they just play better football mm-hmm. than other teams. Right. And even when they make mistakes, they tighten up and get it and get right back to where they were. Yeah. Like yeah, they've they've been impressive. Not like in terms of stats. Mm-hmm. But just the way they play football, they've just been better than every team they played against. Yeah. And uh, those number 16 Arkansas Razorbacks, they've started off 3-0. and Really interesting. But yeah. look at their schedule. Texas A&M this week. Then they Big get Georgia. The then they get Georgia next weekend. Weekend after that, they get Ole Miss. The weekend after that, they get Auburn. <laughs> Arkansas. Speaking of Ole Miss, right now Matt Corral is pretty much the leader in the Heisman race. Mm-hmm. He's looking unstoppable right now. Yeah. Uh, any other teams that you want to bring up uh, before we move on to the NFL? I think Iowa still is clearly not number five, and we will find that out soon. But Clemson, 14-8 to eight over Georgia Tech. Mm-hmm. And it really didn't have much to do with the weather delay. Their passing game, there's no chemistry between DJU and the receivers. Their O-line has regressed even more. Will Shipley looks like a stud. Mm-hmm. Freshman running back out of North Carolina. But outside of their defense and Will Shipley, there's something wrong. Yeah. All of their receivers are the same type of receiver. A lot of them have trouble like creating separation. DJU can't – it's like when he tries to throw back shoulder throws, the receiver just keeps going. And when they throw it deep, the receiver can't catch up to it. Mm-hmm. There's There's nothing clicking on the Clemson offense, and it's looking really, really off right now. So I'm wondering how long it's going to take them to figure that out because we haven't seen that with Clemson in a while. Yeah. yeah it, they they usually have more well-rounded receivers and everything is more balanced on offense. Yeah. I mean, they've lost a lot of guys in draft uh, to the draft in the yeah. last couple of years. So it might just be one of those years that they need like a year to reload just a little bit more. I don't, I don't know. But, yeah, I see that. Um. Okay. Let's move on to the NFL. Time for get into some. Picks. I'm just gonna assume I'm in the lead because I'm going to eventually. It, even if it's wow. not week two, it could be week three. This four. guy, hey man, all of a sudden super cocky. But this week he has reason to be. Um, I mean, listen. <laughs> to be fair, it was a really crazy week of picks. Um, I can't even believe that the one guy on BetMGM was all the way right up until the Lions. Um, but yeah. Some craziness that happened. A lot of overtime, last-minute wins. Malik is now in the lead. 22 correct picks, and I have 16. Hey, listen. So I was right on my upset picks. It's a I big. Was right on the upset. It's picks. a pretty big lead. I picked Philly over San Francisco. Philly could not get it in the end zone. They had multiple chances to win that game. There were there were a few plays that got called back where Jalen Hurts hit deep balls. Yeah. So and whenever they got in the red zone, they couldn't make anything happen. Yeah. So the the Eagles also lost me four hundred and twenty dollars because oh. I made a bet on a like a four game parlay, and I would have been completely correct except for the Eagles. A bit so, too much faith in the Eagles. Yeah. Right so now. the Eagles the <laughs> Eagles hurt me a lot this yeah. weekend. Um, Oakland getting another. Upset win over Pittsburgh. Big Oakland. Kind of crazy. Listen, man, I I don't have I'm I don't have faith in Big Ben anymore. Yeah. And the O line is still terrible. And I happened to pick Minnesota and they missed Kyler. A kick to win the game. They always miss the field goal. So <laughs> they you know, always miss the field goal. They had plenty of chances. Um Chargers didn't show up against Dallas, even though that was a weird game. Who did I pick in that one? Dallas. Okay. <laughs> um and then I can't believe I didn't I, like. I just felt like Baltimore needed to get right, so I didn't think it was going to be this game against Kansas City. So yeah, I'm glad to be wrong on that one. And then the Detroit one, like I said, it was for the irony. So you know, we t- we take L's sometimes, but we'll claw <laughs> back. We'll work our way back. Let's get right into it. 
go do the picks and we can talk about each game um and the previous weeks carolina at houston is our thursday night game unfortunately my man tyrod taylor is hurt and he will not be Listen, playing in this game who who uh has more heart than tyrod taylor like not he, many players he might be top five like most like he has everything on mm-hmm. the end he has he has it all yeah everywhere he, he has goes the biggest heart of any player i think every, quarterback. everywhere he goes he is somewhat successful he just and he just can't stay on the field he puts it on the line the players believe in him mm-hmm. he goes out there and everybody you can see how much he's putting into the game yeah and for some reason is it always comes up short yeah I'm starting to like this Houston team a little bit just because they like they have so many guys that they with they've, Tyrod is the quarterback. Yes. They I'm about to say don't No. So you can, not now. There are some pieces, but with Davis Mills at quarterback. I just like that they they're they're a team that has a chip on their shoulder. They they got so many free agents and all the free agents are kind of guys that have been bounced around a bit and they all kind of came together for a unit. Yeah. It's cool. Panthers, by the way, though, they're two and They got Christian McCaffrey. He's stayed healthy. Their defense has been very strong. Darnold looking confident. And Sam Darnold looks quite comfortable. He's not seeing ghosts anymore. No, he's not. <laughs> he's seeing DJ Moore, who is having a bounce back season. I cannot go with Houston because they do not have Tyrod Taylor. I'm taking Carolina. Me too. Good choice. Yeah, not taking Davis Mills to get his first win in this one. Yeah. Um, Washington at Buffalo in this one. Washington struggling because obviously Fitzpatrick has been hurt. They can't get their running game to completely get going. Um, but that that game last week that that's a confidence builder right there. Yeah, they believe in Heineke. Let's speak about Heineke. Uh, but you were playing the Giants. It's a division game though. It's true. It, it is an important game that you care about when you're Washington. But the highlight, of even this, if it's the Giants, the highlight of this team was supposed to be their defense, and their defense has not been there just yet. And now you have yes. to play the Buffalo Bills. So that's the concern for me. But yes, Heineke, he's played pretty good. He played he's in a playoff tough, game last year too. So, you know, I think they're getting more comfortable with him. Terry McLaurin is looking really good um, with Heineke. Buffalo Bills, though, however, they're one and one. And I think they're still trying to get themselves going. They did destroy Miami last week. They got week. their confidence last week. Uh, I think on defense, though, that, like their offense still wasn't that great. Devin Singletary had a pretty good game, but like Josh Allen. Has not been what he was last year yet. No, oh, he hasn't had a hot start. So he's still he's still been good, but he hasn't been MVP level. Yeah, and I think that's the scary thing is that Buffalo is still not at full strength yet, and I think this is maybe not where they get there, but maybe you see more of that passing game coming back. I'm gonna go with Buffalo in this one. I think I think Washington is just trying to still figure things out, and I think it's gonna take them a little bit, but because their division is usually so weak they'll still have a good chance towards the end of the season. But I think I'm taking Buffalo. I will also take Buffalo because even though Heineke had some highlight throws in that game, he really, in the third and fourth quarter, he had some throws where he just put it on the receiver or McKissick on that throw down the sidelines. But he started rough. Mm -hmm. He was overthrowing guys. He was throwing behind guys. And he took that bad sack in the first half. Yeah. There's still going to be some inconsistencies. I like Washington somewhat. But, yeah, I think Buffalo, they get another win. The confidence continues to rise. Yeah. They still need a high-level running back. Like Devin Singletary, he had that nice long run last week. Mm-hmm. He's a pretty good running back, but. But they gave, they, they still gave goal line work to Zach Moss. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's what they got him for. Mm-hmm. But, but it yeah. would be nice if they had a high-level running back to kind of complete what this team can be. Maybe. Chicago at Cleveland. Justin Fields getting his first start. Justin Fields is starting. Uh, he didn't look that great last week when he got his opportunities, but now he'll have a full week of practice. Can I pick this one first? Sure. I think I feel like you're going to pick the Bears then. Um, the Browns are going to get OBJ back for this game, but they are without Jarvis Landry, so yeah. it'll be interesting. Bears defense actually looked a lot better last week, so that is a slight concern for the Browns because I would have – I would assume that the Browns are just going to try to run the ball a lot since they down Jarvis Landry and OBJ coming off an injury. He's supposed to practice today fully, but they still might want to incorporate him slowly. So hard to say. 
I, I do think the Bears could potentially get something off. Um, what's your pick? You think I might take the Bears, but I'm going Browns. Oh, okay. Because Chubb and Hunt, I think they still get it going, even though the Browns defense, I mean the Bears defense, is going to still be very good. Mm-hmm. It's taken them only two games, really, to start to get something going. Yeah. But that, that O-line and that running game for Cleveland is one of the like three best in the league. Mm-hmm. And I think the Bears' secondary might be the weakest part of their team. I mean, mm-hmm. of their defense. Yeah. And Baker Mayfield can take advantage through play action and get some big plays. Mm. So they might not blow them out. Justin Fields is going to fight in this one. But it could be like a like, like 32, 31-14 mm-hmm. type game. I'll take the Browns. All right. The thing that stinks about being from behind is that sometimes I have to make some bold calls. Risks. Um, and sometimes yes. that makes you fall further listen, behind. Listen, I, I, pl- I play the smart. I play the smart, man. But the good thing is there is a lot of good games this weekend yeah. that could go either way. I'm going to go with the Justin Fields magic. Getting a week of practice, he's going to give that Bears offense a different dynamic being able to run the ball himself. Brown's defense hasn't been as good as we thought they might be. I think the Bears defense might be able to stop the Browns. Going to go with the Bears. Not super confident in it, but I do think there's a chance. Here we go. Baltimore coming into Baltimore. Detroit to play the Lions. Please, please take the intensity out of saying the Lions. It Ravens win this one pretty easily. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing to say. Lions defense is... I am going with the... De- no. The Lions <laughs> offense is pretty solid. Pretty solid. Lions offense is solid or decent? Offensive line... Kudos. Hawkinson and Goff have some chemistry. Yep. DeAndre Swift and uh, Jamal Williams. Listen, Jamal Williams is becoming a star. Yeah. He looks good. His, like, sound bites yeah, after he's practices. Fun. Did you see the video they dropped of, like, the, the Jamal show? No. He's going to have, so. like, a little mini, like, series on the okay. Lions, like, social media account. Yeah, I, I like yeah. the personality, personality there. It's cool. Um, but the defense is awful. Completely oh, awful. Cool. It's so bad. And I can't imagine what's going to happen this weekend because the Ravens throw so many things at you. And if the Ravens have any bit of a passing game, they're just going to torch the Lions. Uh, the Lions can't cover anybody, so I don't I don't know how they're even going to play any of these read option type plays that Lamar does all the time. Yeah, I, I got nothing. It's Baltimore, easy. Yeah. Dan Campbell might lose some hair this year because he's a defensive guy, and that's what he wants to be strong. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, they might start giving up, like, 30-something points a game. Yeah. It's unfortunate because, you know, some people might start putting blame on Dan Campbell. He's not the one to blame. I I think I've seen enough, so far at least, early on, that the Lions have some sort of promise. But I wish now, seeing this defense, now I wish they would have went maybe, well, because they got Penny Sewell, it worked out. But I almost wish they would have won a quarterback because next year they they need to go like all defense. When you don't have draft. when you don't have the personnel, there's not much you can do. Yeah, exactly. It's that simple. Mm-hmm. Okay, Colts at the Titans. Titans coming off a crazy game. Derrick Henry put him on his back. King Henry. Yeah, he did. Julio Jones looked back to, to looked back to normal a little yeah. bit. AJ Brown still isn't completely right. Colts are zero and two. Carson Wentz is going to play in this game. Jacob Eason is. And the Colts continue to have problems. That's why you shouldn't have signed Carson Wentz. It's just, we saw it with the Eagles last year. This was the only team. He's not playing terribly right now. That's not the biggest problem. He can't stay healthy. That is a problem. And that's part of his. That's a problem. But the receiving core just doesn't look, it looks like there's no standout guys. Well, they figured it out last week until he got hurt. Michael Pittman Jr. eight for twelve, eight out of twelve targets, hundred and some yards, with some touchdowns. Michael Pittman could be the guy, but it's just not coming together. Not right fully. Now. I mean, also yeah. Jonathan Taylor didn't have a very good week last week, so and that puts more pressure on the defense, which they're a good defense, but yeah, it, it really seems like they they played a lot of soft coverages and just let Cooper Cup get wide open. Yep. a ton of times this past week. Yeah, and you it can't. It was kind of confusing. You can't do that against Julio Jones and AJ Brown. 
And if if you decide not to, then uh, Derrick Henry is going to run all over you. Yeah. I, I do think the Titans are getting – they'll they're going to start getting into their groove here. Um, so I'm going to go with the Titans. I think the Colts just uh, – there's too many things going on there. I'm not taking this risk. Yeah. This is one I am not taking. Fair enough. Chargers at Kansas City. I'm hoping this one turns into a shootout like we thought the Chargers in Dallas might have been, that it didn't. Um, I think the Chargers have looked pretty good, um, but they can still get better. Justin Herbert had two touchdowns, I think, called back on penalties uh, to wide open guys, so he, his season should be looking better than it is. But this is also the Chiefs coming off a loss. The odds that the Chiefs start one and two, I mean, come on. I'm going with the Chargers. It's that time. No comment, ladies and gentlemen. It's that time. No comment. I think the Chargers defense has looked pretty good. Listen, and you, you're taking a swing like you're down 20 hey, in picks. Baltimore showed how you can somewhat shut down Tyreek Hill. Listen, you don't take them swings. Double it every time. Take those swings, man. I'm going to. <laughs> There's a lot of more questionable games coming up, so I'm going to take the risks here. I think your math is kind of off right now, but hey. That's okay. Listen. You could be a genius in the end. I know. I hope I don't turn into Chris here where I panic and <laughs> pick the Jets every week. Spe- <laughs> Speaking of Chris, let's just jump into that game since you brought up Chris. Uh, you want to bring up that game right now? Let's bring up that performance that Zach Wilson put on last week. Jets playing the Broncos at Denver. Zach Wilson. Listen, man, I-, I have a question. Four interceptions. Is this... Is this a sign of the Jets just never knowing what to do with a quarterback and them just cursing themselves? They they are make they are making Zach Wilson play like he's a three time like Pro Bowler. They're just saying go yeah, out there but, and win us games. But Robert Sala has come out and said that Zach Wilson needs to go for the safer plays. That he's going for those flashy plays, which is exactly what we've been scared which of the we, entire which is what we time. Said. I said Zach Wilson w- would probably lead the league in interceptions as a rookie. So either his coaching staff has not ingrained it in his head enough, or he is being too stubborn about what the coaching staff is saying. I don't really know because we don't have inside information, but that's part of the problem. The other problem is their offensive line is terrible. Their other problem is they don't have a running game. The other problem is they're the Jets. I can in no way, sort, or fashion – Pick the Jets in this game. The Broncos have looked good. Teddy P. Teddy Bridgewater has looked solid. He is leading the league in air like, yards. Yes. Yards per attempt. He's yeah. leading the league in that right now. Mm-hmm. And, and nobody would have ever predicted that. And they are without Jerry Judy. Now, granted, the the Broncos have a really deep wide receiver room. And they have a high level running, yes. running back rotation, yes. too. Yes. And their defense is good, too. So they're they're like coming back to being a good team. Uh, but this overall. is why they picked Teddy over Drew. Yes. When you have a veteran these, guy, you have this type of talent and these type of guys to maybe slide into the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Why would you play a guy that takes unnecessary risks? Yeah. Teddy fits into their schemes a lot better, but I am surprised at how much they are actually pushing the ball downfield with Teddy. Hey, man. Teams don't Haven't see seen that from him in a while. They've only connected on a few, but you have to keep doing it. Right. Because teams don't expect Teddy to air it out like he is. Yeah. And I, I honestly think. Defenses will keep thinking they're going to rein it back eventually. This is Teddy Bridgewater we're talking about. Yeah. They're going to keep airing it out because they have the opportunities to do it. Right. Do the Jets win a game this season? <laughs> they do get the Falcons in a couple weeks. That is, that's that's going to be the game of the week when that comes That'll up. That'll be their chance. Hey, man. What what did I tell you about Matt Ryan? Huh? That, that Tampa game was the type of game where he goes, hey, guys, let's just try and – I'm, I'm going to push us and try to get us to win this one. Yeah. And then there's more heartbreak. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, let's get back to the order so that I don't get all confused. Okay. New Orleans at Foxborough playing the Patriots. Saints came back, back down. down earth. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Very hard. Patriots coming off a pretty solid win. Um, but they didn't look anything crazy. James White is leading their uh, receivers at the moment. And they beat the Jets, so big whoop. Hey, Joey, I, I, I have a question. Yes. Just, just a tiny little question. Mm-hmm. Can I pick this one first? 
Sure, go for this it. This is going to become my NFL picks catchphrase. Okay. Can I pick first? Go for it. I already have my pick in mind anyway. Okay. So. And I'm not wavering. You sure? Yep. I'm not playing any mind games with you. Okay. So. Make your pick. New England. Mac Jones. Somebody that you've referred to as similar to another player that's this, in the league. This new, this new England organization runs things a certain way. Mm-hmm. Bill Belichick coaches a certain way. And he is playing this situation like he did with a former quarterback that you're talking about. Hmm. When that former quarterback first came in the league and Drew Bledsoe got hurt, the plan was, we're going to make this easy for you, kid. Take what you get. You don't have to air it out. Take this, 10 yards, 5 yards, an occasional 15 to 20. Take those easy reads. Our defense is going to do their job. The running game is going to do their job. Take what you can get. And the Patriots are one and one so far. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I think they should have won that first game. I think the Saints are about to, I don't know, I wouldn't say a rough patch. I think Jameis is about to start showing a few of his old slash true colors again. Mm-hmm. And I think he's going to take some more chances that are unnecessary. And when you do that, the Patriots' defense are always going to capitalize on when a quarterback does that. And Mac Jones is going to continue to not make mistakes. Dwayne Harris is going to continue to play at the, at the level he's playing at. Patriots win 2-1. and one. And that's why I picked New Orleans to start with. I think New Orleans ran into the most underrated defense in the league right now in the Carolina Panthers. Alvin Kamara had more attempts than he did rushing yards last week. I think they are going to heavily focus on using Kamara in this game after Jameis Winston finally showed, you know, he does still turn the ball over. He's not 100% right just because he got LASIK. Not all of a sudden going to turn into Steph Curry. Uh, But I think the Saints still have a really solid defense. Both these teams have good defenses. But I think having Kamara, and I think that with because Jameis Winston will take shots, there's chance for big, big play opportunity for the Saints team. Um, I think they might uh, involve Taysom Hill a little bit more in this game as well. I think they'll try to throw things at Bill Belichick. So I'm going to go with the Saints. I think they just have a little bit more firepower right now. And when you throw things at Bill Belichick, what usually happens? Mm-hmm. You don't have to answer. Let's move on. Sometimes. <laughs> they still don't have Let's Stephon move. Gilmore, so that's also a good, good thing. Um, Falcons, here they are. Matt Ryan at New York playing the who Giants. Gets, who gets win number one? It's tough. It's a big game. It's tough. Yes. Can I go first? You can't, don't steal my catchphrase. You, you just go first whenever you want. You're the, you're the host. You do what you want. All right. I'm just here in this space. All right. Because I'm going with Danny Dimes and the New York Giants. Hey man, he, he had some, he got into a rhythm last week. He was, he was looking pretty good. And I think he's ready to turn the corner. And if there was ever a get-right game for Saquon Barkley, it's this game. If Saquon can get this game and do well, he's back. If Saquon fails in this game, it's over. Um, And then there's almost no hope for Saquon, unfortunately, as much as that stinks. Um, I think Daniel Jones has looked a lot better this season. Um, And then they're using him in different running-type schemes. He's found his guy in Sterling Shepard as the safest option. And eventually, I think he'll get a repertoire with Kenny Galladay for those big touchdown plays. The Falcons, however, although Matt Ryan looked pretty good for most part last week, he did throw more touchdowns to Tampa Bay than to his own receivers. And that's a problem. Uh, He did have to force it a bit, but still. Their running game is not working out like it they thought I think it would. Uh, getting Mike Davis in the offseason, they've used a lot of Cordero Patterson, who's a 31-year-old wide receiver running back hybrid thing. He looked really good last week. He did. Teams, uh, he always finds a way to just make a difference yeah. in and they, some way. They've schemed him into a lot of things. Yeah. But I think their defense is awful. Um, they're still trying to get Kyle Pitts acclimated, which I think he's getting there. He, he looked good. He had a good. solid game last week. Yeah. Calvin Ridley has struggled a little bit, but I think it's also because of the Matt Ryan struggles a little bit. 
Um, so yeah, I just think that the Giants actually have a little bit more here, and I think the like they have James Bradbury to st- uh, shut down Calvin Ridley a bit, a little bit. So let's go with the Giants, and they're at home. Luckily, the Falcons don't have to play the Bucks defense again. That's true. Well, they do, but not back to back weeks. Not not this week. They put up a really good fight against one of the best overall teams in football over the past decade. Without a ton of high-level players at several key positions, they still show life. They have some fight. I think the Giants will think they're ready for this game. (laughs) Joe Judge is going to think his game plan is one of the best in football. Daniel Jones is going to come out slinging it. Saquon thinks he's going to rush for 100, and that defense thinks they're going to be all over the Falcons. And this might be the beginning of the end for the New York Giants. (laughs) Daniel Jones, Joe Judge, the rest of that coaching staff, and a lot of other pieces. Daniel Jones and Kenny Galladay got into it on the sideline last week. They don't have much chemistry. Him and Sterling Shepard are the only two with chemistry right now. Yeah. I don't think that's very good. Saquon Barkley had one really good run last week. I don't think that's very good. Yep. Terrell Heineke was picking them apart in that second half last week. Matt Ryan is better than Taylor Heineke, and he has a few better options than Taylor Heineke. (laughs) Okay. You make a good argument. The New York football giants think they're ready for this one. This is the first one of the season. Giants fans are showing out. 27-24 Falcons. Okay. Moving along. We got to start speeding it up a okay. little bit. Cincinnati at the Steelers. Both teams looked really strong in week one. Well, Steelers didn't look that strong in week one. Uh, both teams had good wins in week one. Both teams not so great in week two. Uh... Steelers had a scare at the end of their game against the Raiders. Deontay Johnson going down with a knee injury. He's supposedly supposed to be okay. Um, he, there's a chance he might not play in this game, but I, signs are pretty uh, positive. Bengals couldn't get their run, go, run game going after they did uh, in game one. And Jamar Chase still looks solid. Connected with Joe Burrow again. T. Higgins is a little banged up, I I just heard. Um, but the problem with the Steelers is that their offensive line is terrible. Ben Roethlisberger has struggled a bit. And the Bengals' defense has actually looked not terrible, which is surprising. I'll let you pick first. <laughs> you got two teams with battle lines. <laughs> yes. Two teams with two young, promising running backs that can't get much going right now because of those whole lines. Mm-hmm. One team has a younger quarterback that's under duress nonstop. The other team has an old quarterback that just wants to run around nonstop because he's Ben Roethlisberger and he's extra. Yep. Two talented receiving cores. Very T. Talented. Higgins banged up. Deontay Johnson banged up. A lot of similarities. You know what the one big difference is? That Pittsburgh defense is nasty. Mm-hmm. Elvin Ingram is making an impact already. T.J. Watt is the big money man that's getting sacks. Mm-hmm. And I think Minka Fitzpatrick starts to get back on track to what he used to be. Yeah. One big one big difference. The Pittsburgh defense is for real. Yeah. Joe Burrow seeing ghosts. I think I'm going to go along with you on this one because this is one I don't want to play it risky on um, because I do agree that the defense for Pittsburgh is definitely better. And Joe Burrow has looked pretty good, but he's looked a little off at the same time. Arizona. At Jacksonville. Oh, boy. Kyler Murray has looked really good. Two teams that couldn't be going in further different directions. Yes. Uh, The one thing that I will say about Kyler, though, he is still making weird little mistakes. He threw two picks last week. When you play the way he does, mistakes are going to happen. Yes, I get that. Um, But it makes you a little nervous in bigger games, not this game. Um, They have also one of the biggest, strongest wide receiver cores. Um, they don't even they didn't even have to use DeAndre Hopkins very much last week. Rondell Moore showed out. 
And meanwhile, the Jaguars just cannot figure anything out. The only thing that's going good for the Jaguars is Marvin Jones Jr. That's it. That's all there is. <laughs> Trevor Lawrence has shown spots, but he's also looked like a rookie at times. Yes. And the Cardinals, they like to bring pressure. And pressure is not good for a rookie quarterback. I don't know how you can't pick the Cardinals in this game. I'm going with Arizona. Jacksonville, just get rid of Urban Meyer. Not, not going crazy on this one. You know who I'm taking. Yeah. Yes. Not much to be said. Um, Dolphins at the Raiders. Raiders, the surprise 2-0 team. The Dolphins lost to a last week. Jacoby let's, Brissett. Let's, let's just make the pick. Jacoby Brissett. <laughs> Jacoby Brissett. Yeah, unfortunately, back. I can't pick my Dolphins. They're also struggling a little bit more on defense than I thought yeah. they would to open up the season. Season, And like we said last week, Derek Carr has looked really good this season. Tremendous. So definitely going with the Raiders. Yep. Um, I think it's kind of an easy pick, unfortunately. But there is a chance that maybe Miami's defense could win this game. But not, it's not very likely the way it looks. <clears throat> game of the week right here. Our own Joe Johnson is going to be at this game when he goes to L.A. Tampa Bay at the Rams. Could be an NFC Championship preview. Tom Brady needs 499 yards to pass. Wow, I'm drawing a blank. Who he is passing. Brett Favre? No, for the number one of all time uh, passing yards. Drew Brees? Yeah, I think it's Drew Brees. Okay. It would be Brees. Should be Brees. Yes. Um, He needs 499 yards. So he's not going to get 499 yards in this game. Um, But if he gets like 300, he'll only need 199 in the following game. The following game, he's playing the Patriots. Wouldn't he love to get that record at Foxborough? I think he's going to throw just enough. And then if they get out early, um, we'll see. They might honestly play the math here. And they might throw it a lot if they need to. Um, But I don't know. This game is going to be weird because the Rams, uh, Cooper Cup and Matthew Stafford have looked amazing so far and then tom brady has looked really good neither team's running uh game has looked outstanding i mean daryl henderson has looked good but he's banged up they got sony michelle in in the second half and he looked better which yeah we expect he'll be the number one guy as the season goes on right so maybe a full week of practice for sony michelle because daryl henderson i i don't think he's going to play in this game um will be interesting so it depends on the defenses tampa bay can stop the run at will Their secondary can make plays, but they also give up plays. So that's the hard part. And then the Rams, you know, Aaron Donald, Jalen Ramsey. I think this game is going to be really fun, but it's really hard to call. And the only thing that I'm going to go off of, Antonio Brown just went into uh, COVID-19 protocol. So it's going to be really tough for him to make it to the game. I'm going to go with the Rams. I guess I'm going to go with Matthew Stafford, but it's a tough call. And I think maybe just because it's at home. The Colts got into the red zone several times multiple times against the Rams last week and couldn't convert Mm -hmm. touchdowns on those opportunities. When Tampa Bay gets there, they're going to score some touchdowns. Yeah. Too many options, too much talent. Quarterback is too good. Buccaneers. I also just think the Rams can maybe actually get pressure on Tom Brady. Seahawks at Minnesota. Vikings 0-2. Two overtime losses. Can I pick first? That is disappointing. Yes, go ahead. I have opinions. Okay. Captain Kirk. Really good start for Kirk Cousins, actually. Yes. He's been really good. 600 yards, five touchdowns, no picks. Mm-hmm. Russell Wilson, around 600 yards, six touchdowns, mm-hmm. no picks. Yep. This Dalvin, isn't Kirk Cousins' fault. Dalvin Cook. Better running back than, C- than Seattle. Mm-hmm. Tyler Lockett is the best receiver in this game. But. There's a lot of good receivers. Adam in this Thielen game. looks good. Justin Jefferson looks good. KJ Osborne actually looks good. KJ Osborne looks good. Game is at home. This is a bounce back game for Minnesota. Okay. I think they won't be bad. I think they're good enough to be a middle of the road team. I'm taking Minnesota in this one. Okay. Both defenses yeah. kind of subpar. Yeah, yeah. The Seahawks defense, I don't think they're good enough to truly make Kirk Cousins very uncomfortable. Yeah. I do think the Vikings could control this game through the running game. Yeah. Um, But I think this is a game where I can go for Seattle and try to make up some ground. Sunday night football. Green Bay at the San Francisco 49ers. 
who knows who's going to be in the backfield for the 49ers because Jermichael Hasty is going to be out for this game. A Trey Sermon is in concussion protocol. Elijah Mitchell is a little banged up. There's a chance he might not play. The only other guy that's on their team right now is Trenton Cannon. They have a bunch of guys on their practice squad now. They have, like, I think Lamar Miller, TJ Yeldon, somebody else that used to play. And then Jaquise Patrick, who was a former XFL guy, who's like 6'3", 200 and some pounds. I don't think it matters. We've seen the 49ers be able to run with whoever. Packers, I still think, look a little shaky. Even in that Lions game, there were some weird things that I saw from the Packers. I'm going to go with the 49ers. I think they need to, like, they're going to figure out how to use George Kittle. He started off slow. Garoppolo's actually looked pretty good. Debo Samuels looked really good. And uh, the 49ers just have a better defense. So I'm going to go with the 49ers in this. That game against the Eagles showed me some things I didn't like about the 49ers. Mm -hmm. I think with Garoppolo, they're a good offense. I think eventually they'll have to go to Trey Lance to take the next step. And I don't think this will be the week that that happens. I think Aaron Rodgers isn't – he might not be back to fully locked in like he was last season, Mm -hmm. like MVP Aaron Rodgers. But he got into a mode against the Lions where he was putting throws right on guys. Peyton Manning said something during their telecast where he said there was a touchdown pass to Robert Tanyan where he threw it past a linebacker's ear. Yeah. And Peyton Manning said the ball caught Robert Tanyan. Mm-hmm. He didn't catch the ball. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers is was so locked in on that. Mm-hmm. And I think he makes a few more throws like that. The offense gets rolling. And the defense makes a few plays on Jimmy Garoppolo. Packers win in San Francisco. Okay. Yep, I can see that one, too, being a, a bit of a toss-up. And our Monday night game, which I actually am kind of excited about, Eagles at Dallas. Both teams looked good in week one. Uh, you know, even though Dallas lost to Tampa Bay, Eagles looked really good in their week one win. And then week two, they couldn't score, but the 49ers have a good defense. And then the Cowboys bounce back, and they get a win over the Chargers. But I felt like their play style was weird. They ran the ball a lot. Dak hardly threw the ball. Um, Tony Pollard had a better game than Ezekiel Elliott on less touches. Um, but it's just going to be a weird game. The Eagles' defense is actually pretty good, but they did lose Brandon, Ga- uh, Brandon Graham. And Trevon Diggs will probably be on Devontae Smith in this game. So there's a lot of weird storylines, but the Cowboys have way more offensive power than the Eagles do. Yet I think the Eagles are going to get it done. I'm back to an Eagles fan. I'm picking the Eagles. This is their bounce back game. Uh, this was going to be my fun pick. Good. Take the boys now. Listen, you 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 really just want me to okay. <laughs> I, Cowboys, I guess. I guess I'm going. I'm going Dallas. You got to commit to your pick, though. Do I though? <laughs> Unless you want to just take the Eagles. I'm. I'm. Uh, no more of us taking the same team in these picks today. I'm going I mean, Dallas. That didn't happen. It Wait. looks like they're starting to figure out the Pollard and Zeke. Yeah. Mix. That offense is high powered, and the defense made some plays last week. It's going to be tough on Jalen Hurts. Dallas. You picked Tampa Bay, right? Yes. Okay. For some reason, I didn't write down. All right. There's your week three picks. It's going to be interesting because there's a lot of ones that we've differed on this week. So it's either a big comeback for for me or uh, maybe further down. But we'll see. We'll see. It should be fun. I like the slate of games that we have this week. Um, And, yeah, it, already the week two was crazy. So I can imagine week three is going to be just as nuts. This has been Views from the Sidelines. We'll see you guys next week when we got uh, Michigan and Michigan State starting to get into some meaningful games. And the Lions starting 0-3. Peace. You are going to be so mad. Also, Ben Simmons, nobody cares. You can sit out and trade him.